Thank you for your presentation. Round of applause for Martin. Our next uh, speaker, um, uh, Shelley Jane Price, is Jay Price. Uh, Shelley Jane is a partner at the Sterling and Rose uh, Boutique Law Firm that provides specialist legal and corporate advice on emerging technology. Uh, today, SJ will be speaking about digital. Uh, I've just got cut off there. Welcome, welcome to SJ. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks a lot for staying around this late, really appreciate it. I just want to start off by asking how many people here actually have digital assets, that you hold digital assets? Okay, great. How many of you actually have those assets right now in a hot wallet? No one. One, maybe, maybe you're doing a few things with it, yeah, understand. So I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about, Whoa. yay, we're putting some light on the subject, right? About digital assets. And I want you to cast your mind back to the middle of COVID 2021. And this is when Yuga Labs launched their Board Apes NFTs. Do you remember that? Does anyone here actually have a board ape or is prepared to confess they have a board ape in NFT? Right? Yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. So you can go into the online board apes yacht club and you can wander around and have a look and there's these board apes there and they look all very dull and there's a bit of metal music playing. However, there are some places you cannot go unless you hold a Bored Apes NFT, unless you hold the token. For example, you cannot go to the bathroom unless you're a member. Now, why you need to go to the bathroom in an online club, I, I don't really understand that, but apparently it's really exciting and you get to put graffiti on the wall. So people will want to like have that token. The Bored Apes Club is really a club. You're actually paying for much more than just this token. You are paying to join a very exclusive club because these tokens and these NFTs are owned by very famous celebrities. Snoop Dogg, Paris Hilton, Jimmy Fallon. And they have ape fests where people all turn up when they have their NFTs and they rub shoulders with all these celebrities. What Yuga Labs has realised is that the value of NFTs is predominantly linked to utility and linkages over to the physical world. It's joining a great club, it's opportunities, it's merchandise, it's going to Apefest. Do you know this board ape? So this board ape is the Rudolph equivalent. This is the most famous ape of all. Do you know why? So there's three reasons. One. Grace. Sorry? Grace. Yeah, it could be. Um, this one? This one was owned by, or is owned by Seth Green. Do you know who Seth Green is? Like Robot Chicken. Chicken. Yeah, Robot Chicken family guy. I think he was also in Austin Powell. So that's number one. Uh, Number two, <laughs> this ape is actually the star in an animated series currently being developed by Seth Green called White Horse Tavern. And the third reason this is the most famous ape of all is because this ape was kidnapped. Someone hacked into Seth Green's wallet and lured Seth Green with some sort of fishing analogy to get a, a mint an NFT for cats or something. And somehow or other, they managed to get in and actually steal four of Seth Green's NFTs from his wallet. And this is how Seth Green talked about it on Twitter. Hey, I got fished. Look, I lost my NFTs. Darkwing84, hit me up and we can sort this out. Because the most famous ape of all, Fred, was purchased on OpenSea 
by Darkwing84. So the hacker grabbed the NFT and within less than an hour had it on for sale on OpenSea and it was purchased by Darkwing84. Well, at the time, all the tech magazines were going wild, saying, who is Darkwing84? Is this just a really elaborate scheme by Seth Green to try and, like, hype up things before the release of White Horse Tavern? Of course, that's one of the really interesting things about these types of assets. Darkwing 84, we don't know who that is. And from a legal perspective, we don't know who that is as a person, as a legal person. Same thing with the hacker. How can you actually go and chase and hold someone accountable if you can't even find out who they are in the physical world? As lawyers, the way we actually seek justice is that we summon someone or we prosecute them or we serve them with a writ. But it's incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to do that if you do not know who they are in the physical world. And that was the issue that Seth Green had. He wanted to find Darkwing 84 because he needed his ape back. The reason it's interesting is that, unlike many NFTs, the Bored Apes Yacht Club purported to actually give the intellectual property rights to commercialise these apes to use them in any way they wanted, t-shirts, hats, or animated series. So when Fred was kidnapped, the legal position was incredibly unclear, and the production of Whitehorse Tavern went on hold while they tried to sort it out. So who is Darkwing 84? Apparently the FBI was looking. Apparently Interpol was looking. But you know what? I want you to be amazed and gasp with excitement when I tell you the scoop that I am bringing to Block Week, Blockchain Week, here in Perth. I met. <laughs> now this is recording. You must be. I met Darkwing eighty four to get his side of the story in person, in Perth. Come on. Ooh. Hey, okay. And there's a photo. So there's Darkwing84. He's wearing his Bored Apes merch. And there's me. So when he turned up, the first thing I said to him was, OK, I need to see your MetaMask wallet because I need to validate that you are, in fact, Darkwing84. So you can see why this is interesting, right? Normally you ask for someone's passport or their driver's license. Here I'm like, show me your MetaMask wallet. He did, and yes, it was Darkwing84. Now this is his side of the story. He knew nothing, nothing about this whole thing with Fred. The first he knew about it is he got a tweet from a journalist, not from Interpol, not from the FBI, but from a journalist. And the tweet said, Darkwing84, do you have any comment on Seth Green's stolen ape? And Darkwing84 is like, why would I have any comment? Like, that is just weird. But he went onto the internet and went, oh my god, I have got Seth Green's so he tweeted to the journal and said, tell Seth to give me a call. So Seth did give him a call and Darkwing84 said, put your camera on because I want to see you. Again, the issue of identity is a big deal. So the camera went on, it was Seth Green. Darkwing84 said, hey dude, you're really lucky I bought you eight because you're going to get it back. I just don't want to lose out on the deal. And he didn't. In fact, Darkwing84 told me right now he's actually creating a very nice renovation on his physical house. <laughs> you can see this story suggests a number of the issues that we face when we have digital assets. The importance of identity, the identity of the people we purchase digital assets from or sell digital assets from, the ability to enforce it. Who do you go call? FBI, Interpol, police, Ghostbusters. It's a very difficult issue. 
you'll also see that there are issues about intellectual property rights. And the key here is read the terms and conditions. Read smart contract because it can be very different depending on what NFTs you have. Finally, we're going to see a lot more phishing and social engineering attacks. So really important to be alert. Artificial intelligence is totally lowering the bar, particularly generative artificial intelligence, to hackers and social engineers. So be totally alert. With respect to AI, if you want to have your say, there is a consultation underway right at the moment. So please make sure you get your submission in by the 26th of July to ensure you have a say about how AI is regulated in Australia. And finally, I think we can expect a lot more monkey business in this area. <laughs> We're hosting a, web, uh, a webinar on Thursday as well, aren't you? We are, yes. So what's it called? Yes. Uh, so this is for the Risk Managers Association. We are examining generative AI and particular novel risks about generative AI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, SJ. Round of applause again for SJ. Thank you. Just speak Brandon. Brandon. told the story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got uh, two more speakers tonight. Um, uh, we've got uh, our next speaker, which I'll introduce soon, and then lastly, we've got. Um, uh, a speaker for another speaker from Layer 1X as well. But our next speaker, Aaron Alderman, uh, the Chief Technology Officer from Swell Labs. Uh, Aaron will be speaking about. Um, Aaron will be speaking about. <laughs> <laughs> Swell Labs, who is also a major contributor to the Swell Protocol DAO and ecosystem. Round of applause, please, for Aaron. Hello, hello. All right, I'll try and make this interesting. I don't have a great story to tell, but I want to tell you the story about Swell and Swell Network and what we're doing. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I heard uh, Martin Purcell's talk, and unfortunately, this one's going to be a little bit more technical, uh, but you know, that's the nature of the blockchain. Sometimes there's technical projects out there. So uh, what is Swell Labs and, and what do we do? So uh, Swell uh, Labs is an up and coming Ethereum staking uh, protocol. Uh, we're in the liquid staking space. Uh, who here has heard of the Ethereum merge and, and when Ethereum went from proof of work to proof of stake? All right, so quite a few people. So it, our, our protocol is, is helping support the Ethereum ecosystem uh, through uh, validation and staking on the, uh, the Ethereum beacon chain. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing protocols in DeFi at the moment. Uh, yes, we're in a bit of a <laughs> crypto winter at the moment, but that hasn't stopped us from hitting our milestones and doing really well in the growth stakes. Uh, we're well positioned to capture the uh, staking inflows at the moment. So staking um, on Ethereum, now that we've gone to proof of stake, uh, has grown quite significantly over the last few months, and we're uh, proving ourselves to be in a great position to be able to take advantage of this. Uh, as a product, we're differentiated uh, on multiple fronts. Uh, there's not that many uh, competitors in this space, uh, but it is a growing space. Uh, we do have a few differentiations, um, but there's uh, kind of a convergence of, of how much innovation you can really do in this space. Uh, we're the first LST uh, liquid staking token protocol to implement uh, Chainlink proof of reserve. So uh, as anyone has heard of Chainlink, they're one of the most trusted uh, protocols out there. They secure DeFi. They are what is driving the power and the explosion of DeFi in the market. And we partnered with them, and, and they actually have a, uh, a proof of reserve feed that says that you know when you stake with Swell Network, you, there is traceability. Your funds can be tracked to the validators. All of this is proven on chain, and so there's no trust me, bro. It's check the chain. So that's one of the, the important innovations that we've got in this area. We're non-custodial. We don't own the keys, so you know we can't run off with them and you know, leave people 
dry. So that's always important to, with these protocols is to make sure that uh, they're fully audited and fully trustworthy. Uh, we've also implemented a bug bounty program. We think that decentralizing uh, the, the bug sourcing is a really important thing. It allows everyone in, in the world to go check our source code and try and find bugs. And so far, so good, no bugs. Uh, we've also obviously partnered with some big names in the space to ensure that our smart contracts are, are well audited as well. Uh, so far, since we've launched, since about six weeks ago, and this is a bit old, sent this slide through a few weeks ago, uh, we've uh, got 20,000 Ethereum staked. It's added out to about 20, 28,000 Ethereum staked, and it keeps growing week on week. Um, and we've also got some uh, deep liquidity in our LPs. What this means is that if you uh, buy, uh, if you stake with us and you receive the Swedes token, you're able to redeem it uh, on, on the secondary market through, through a decentralized exchange. Uh, we don't have withdrawals enabled yet, but that's obviously on our, on our roadmap. But it means that you can uh, stake in the knowledge that you can unstake at any time uh, via going through the secondary markets. Uh, we're backed by some pretty big uh, players in, in this space. Uh, so our framework, IS, ISOG Ventures, Apollo Capital, uh, pretty big in Australia. Um, Maven 11 and Vixen Ventures. Uh, also, with, there are a number of uh, private investors, uh, some big names in this space. If you've heard of the, the Bankless podcast, uh, Ryan C. Adams and David Hoffman are uh, investors in our project, as well as uh, Synthetics Crew, which is another Aussie, Aussie startup. So Kane Warwick uh, is one of them as well, as well as uh, Fernando Martintelli from, from Balancer. So there's a number of big names, especially Aussie names. Might have gathered by now there's a strong Aussie contingent in Swell Networks. So what are we trying to do? What is our vision in this space? So the, the first core principle is, is about staking. So we, we believe in Ethereum. We believe in the Ethereum ecosystem. And we want to secure the Ethereum ecosystem. And staking is the number one way to do this. Uh, staking gives you the, uh, the, is the stake in the proof of stake. That's what makes the Ethereum ecosystem hum along, tick along. Um, and you can put your transactions on the blockchain. Uh, safely. Uh, one of the benefits to staking is you get a return, a yield. Uh, as you produce blocks on the Ethereum blockchain, you also get a reward from that as well. So you can uh, stake your Ethereum with Swell, and then you'll get a return on that, and that return is based on the return that the validators, as they validate and secure the network, uh, giving you uh, passive returns. But that's not the end of the story. Once you've got the uh, the, the Swedes token, that's the, the token that backs uh, that that's is, your, is representing your stake in the uh, the validators. You can then take that and go into DeFi. You can go onto a lending borrowing protocol. You can LP it. There's all sorts of things you can do in DeFi. So we want to shift the narrative from uh, Ethereum being the, the number one uh, asset that everyone talks about when they're going into DeFi to being uh, uh, liquid staking tokens, and because Ethereum is quite unique in the sense that for a proof of stake network, there's roughly only like 20, 25 percent of Ethereum is actually staked. In other proof of stake networks, it can be up to 70, 80 percent. And the problem is, once you get up to those levels, you, there's no real to token flows to go around. So now you've got to be thinking about, well, what other, what other ways can you do decentralized finance if you don't have Ethereum? Well, you could you could still do it, but now you've got a liquid staking token instead. And so this is what we're seeing um, post Chappella. So Chappella was an upgrade uh, that happened uh, a couple of months ago in Ethereum. So that's when Ethereum enabled withdrawals. Uh, so you can now exit your validators. You can now get your Ethereum back. Also, the rewards are harvested back into the Ethereum chain. We've seen that uh, this was <laughs> one of those events where people were like, oh, no, no, everyone's going to exit, everyone's going to leave, and then Ethereum's going to die. But it turned out, no, it uh, didn't happen. It's actually just grown day on day, week on week, month on month. And we were there at that time when this happened. Uh, our protocol launched pr pretty soon after, around that time, and we were able to take advantage of that, of that bound. And so we think over the next couple of years that there's going to be a huge opportunity where staking will just grow exponentially as more and more people realise that why just hold Ethereum when you can hold Ethereum and get some returns on it at the same time uh, in, a, in a safe and controlled way. 
So what makes uh, Swell different than the competition? So uh, the first one is, is that we're not custodial, so we don't hold the keys, as, as mentioned before, that is really important for, uh, for, for security and trust. Uh, we're backed by, by Chainlink with the proof of reserves. Uh, we're well audited, uh, so we've got, got the smart contract security. Uh, we also have a, a reward-bearing token model that we believe is uh, superior than the others. So one potential way that you can get rewards is you, you know, wake, wake up in the morning and you've got more tokens in your wallet, kind of like income, right? And that has a certain different tax consideration than, say, you know, holding a token, token value goes up and then you sell it sometime later. So we've actually got the latter model, which we believe is, is, is potentially more lucrative for people who, who want that, that kind of exposure. Uh, we also are, are very strong in believing that a, a simple UI is very important. So a lot of products out there, you go into DeFi, it's very complicated, multiple approval processes, and it's just very scary, and you, you think you're going to get stolen, your money stolen at every point in time. So we've really focused on a really simple flow that just works. We've tested it multiple times, such a simple flow. It's one of the one comments that people leave about our application. Uh, at the moment, we've got a, a special on where, because we're still in the growth stage, we're not taking any commissions. So uh, usually, you would, uh, the node operators as well as us would take t take a slice of the commissions. At the moment, we're subsidising uh, the growth period, so you can stake without any any fees. Uh, we're also uh, partnered with some of the best of the best node operators in the world. These people do it on an industrial scale, tens of thousands of, of uh, computers and nodes that they handle. And so we partnered with them to provide the best experience, the best returns possible. We're not talking about people in their garages and you know having to play with computers. No, this is an industrial scale uh, professional operators. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about uh, what we've got. It's called The Voyage, and this is our uh, our kind of gamification that we're trying to get community involvement and, and, and get a, an upswell of, of involvement in, in our protocol and also start to launch the, the Swell DAO. Uh, we've integrated with many, many different uh, DeFi applications and, uh, and, and protocols out there and it just keeps growing time after time, much to my, my headache as a CTO. Uh, we'll be having inbuilt vaults and other other ways in which people can uh, get involved in DeFi and in, in going with the same theme of being as seamless and, and as easy to use as possible. Uh, and yeah, looking forward, we're also wanting to you know get get more decentralization in the mix. At the moment, we've got we, we've got the, the professional node operators, but there are models in the future where we can decentralize this while still being secure and safe. So these are our uh, Genesis node operators. Uh, if, uh, if you're not in this space, these names probably don't mean anything, but uh, rest assured that these are some of the biggest and professional node operators. Uh, they're very experienced in this space, uh, operate these things on a very large scale, uh, and that's why we partnered with them. And the same with our security partners. So Sigma Prime was our original uh, smart contract auditor and we've also partnered with Immunify for the, the bug bounty program. Uh, this is a big list of, of certain uh, things that we've integrated with. Um, probably won't go through them, it's not that, that, that important, but uh, the important part I think is our voyage. So this is our incentive program that we've got ongoing at the moment. Uh, this is how we're launching our Swell DAO uh, by participating in this world voyage by staking or by uh, providing LP or other other mechanisms, uh, community involvement, joining our Discord. Uh, there's multiple ways in which you can uh, earn pearls and then those pearls will be redeemable for Swell token in the future. And so it's a way to uh, bootstrap our DAO uh, and to get community engagement and get, get, get people interested in, in the protocol. Uh, so how have we been going? So since uh, since we launched uh, six weeks ago, uh, we got a TVL of 38 million. It's actually more like 50 million. Just checked a couple of hours ago. Um, so we're growing even 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 still. Uh, we've got over over 20,000. Probably yeah, took, took now about 28,000 Ethereum locked 
um, you can see that yeah, chart going up and to the right is always good and we're, we keep on growing even in this bear market um, thanks to the, the fantastic worth of our, our growth team and, and everyone uh, behind the scenes who, who'd been able to make everything happen. All right, thanks everyone and hope you have a good rest of your evening. with Blockchain Australia, which runs the show every year, but um, many as we can, I suppose, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think once a year for Blockchain Australia, yeah, there's so many events running with one team of Blockchain as well. Guys, thank you for, uh, thank you again to um, Aaron from Soul Network. Round of applause Aaron. So our last speaker of the night um, is uh, Cody King. Uh, he is our Chief Experience Officer at Layer One X. Uh, he actually he flew in from Utah uh, only about a week ago, and, and uh, to 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 work with us closely here. And uh, we're lucky enough to have him to be to be able to present. So um, I did actually ask him to uh, write his own bio. And typical to most Americans, it was about a page and a half long. So, um, <laughs> but what I managed to 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 resize that to about a paragraph. So look, Cody has uh, dedicated his entire career to reimagining how we interact with technology. Cody has a uh, 20 plus year track record of working with uh, giants like eBay, PayPal, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Nike, and 20th, 20th Century Fox, uh, just to name a few. As of late, he's begun applying those same skills and knowledge to Layer 1X, and Cody tonight will be speaking about the next generation uh, crypto wallet experience. So without further ado, Cody King. You know, the nice part about going last is that I can ignore Machu jumping up and down at the end, <laughs> telling me that I've got time, right? Uh, anyways, thanks for everybody for sticking around. Um, I think we're going to have some fun, right? We're going to go down some rabbit holes here. Uh, so hopefully most of you guys aren't too sloshed. Uh, and uh, can kind of keep up with me on this one. Um, We're Australian, we can hold our liquor. Yeah? Well, that's good, because most of us cowboys in the West can too. <laughs> so um, we'll meet up afterwards and we'll see who will have a little drink again. Oh, challenge accepted. All right. She's so, gone. <laughs> sounds good. So I want to start out with like a little social experiment. So let's have some fun, right? All right, so what I want you to do is you get four lines, and I want you to try to cover every single dot, but only using four straight lines. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, and I want you guys to try to do it. Sorry, I'll move over on this side so that you guys can see it. We need some music, right? <laughs> right? All right, about another 10 seconds. Okay, did anybody get it? You did? Promise? We got another guy in the back? You got it? All right. Did you get that? No. Did you get that? You did? Okay. Uh, Leanne's in the back. Just make sure you drop off your application because you got a job. <laughs> All right? So the, most people, 20% of the people cannot solve this on their first time. Okay, my question to you, all of you is how many of you basically stuck within a square box trying to solve this? Majority of you, right? Okay, 
Why do you think that is? Programming. What? Programming. Programming, right? How many of us have heard the term think outside the box? Yeah. Freaking hate that cliche marketing <laughs> crap, right? <laughs> because when we try to think outside the box, it's great, we've been told that our whole life, but when in reality, it really makes us cause a lot more problems for us down the road, right? So, here's my thing. Stop. It's a bad advice to go off of, right? So, the reason why I say that, let's talk about crypto, right? Who here has MetaMask, right? For now. For now. Oh. So I've got, a, I've got a Web3 site, or I've got a protocol, DeFi project, anything that I'm trying to connect with, can I connect with it immediately right inside the experience? No, I have to go outside of the box to connect with it, right? At the moment. At the moment. Oh, I love you. <laughs> right? You know something we don't know. <laughs> We've just built our own, we, we've put our own... Um, MetaMask, if you like, into our own box. Into oh, our own sweet. Chain. Dude, you should seriously come up here and <laughs> co-do this with me, all right? Do I get a job? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Did you solve the problem? Yeah, easily. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So, why do we need to focus on experience, right? So, customers are likely to spend 140% more for after a positive experience than customers who reported a negative experience. Interesting, right? That's why I get paid the big bucks. I get called out by the big giants come in to see how much I can help them optimize their experience for their customers. Why? So that they can generate more without creating more product, right? Mm -hmm. I love this. Uh, these two quotes by Forbes. What, four years apart, right? In 2023, we'll see a rise of a new breed of consumer who will have higher expectations in terms of customer experience throughout the buyer journey. They want it tailored, right? How many of us have thought of something to buy and then miraculously go to Amazon and lo and behold, it's already there, right? I was coming out here, Machu mentioned that I was flying out here a week ago. I had to buy one of those little converter things from my plug-in to your guys' plug-in. <laughs> Didn't even say anything. I thought about it. I went to Amazon. Lo and behold, first item up was the converters, right? Crazy how that works. It is your thinking. Okay, <laughs> so how L1X breaks down the experience. User experience versus customer experience, right? These two go definitely hand in hand. The best way I like to describe what experience is, it's like driving a car. How many of us know the ins and outs of their car? How to re uh, change their oil, change their timing belt, change their engine, right? We got a few people. I'm not one of them. I know I get in the car, I turn the key, it's going to work, right? Hopefully. Cross fingers. Something that'll help you. It's called power. Oh, power. Yeah, yeah. Petrol, oil, water, electrics, rubber. I like that. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Mass majority of people today, take my kids for an example, can't even drive a freaking stick shift. In America, stick shifts are gone. It's a lost art, right? People are all dependent on the automatic. They don't even know how to change their, their oil. They take it down to the dealership to get the oil changed, everything repaired, right? And that's the difference between what's under the hood versus what we interact with on a daily basis. Make sense? Okay, next thing. The reason why I shared that with you is because, look, this is from four years ago. Number two thing. The biggest pain points for DAP developers. Number two, bad UX of crypto. UX, everything under the hood, right? It's interesting because I would strongly agree with this still today, four years later.
What has changed? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so who wants to learn a little bit about the, the uh, L1X wallet? Thank you. Oh, thanks, Liam. Appreciate that. Okay, so for everybody that stayed, thank you, because you're going to get some major, major L1X alpha. Okay? So, the problems uh, currently in uh, crypto, decentralization, interoperability, user experience, and security. Those are my four. And the biggest thing is this. Decentralization doesn't have to mean bad user experience. Okay? So what we're planning on doing is just we're bringing all four of these into one seamless user experience. How we're going to do that? We are coming out with our version of the Chrome extension wallet, okay? But there are three things that we're gonna be doing totally different that's gonna set us apart, okay? First one, wallet. And I have up there one wallet to rule them all. I've been joking around with the executive team. I can't remember, Lord of the Rings, I put a wallet out there and I did that whole little thing. Do you remember that image? Yeah, it, was, it floated around the office for quite a while. But I'm serious when I say this. One wallet to rule them all. Imagine L1X having a primary wallet. And as you import your wallets to our Chrome extension wallet, they become linked wallets. Okay? How many of you guys have more than five wallets? How many of you have more than 10 wallets? Machu, how many wallets do you have? 50. Oh, jeez. So the reason why I would bring this up is for a security standpoint, a lot of us, every time we start with a new protocol, we'll start a new wallet, right? Why do we do that? Because we don't want to have everything in one bag, right? It's a security measure, right? So let's keep that going. So with the interoperability that we're able to do, because you're linking those wallets to that primary L1X wallet, you'll be able to view all of your wallets through one single view. Okay? You like that? Okay. There's more to come. Okay? Next one is transactions. So, Lionel, let's just say I wanted to send you a full ETH. Okay? However, I've got half an ETH on Ethereum, and I was stupid and I bought half an ETH on BNB. Uh, now i got to move everything over to ETH, right? Nope. Because of our interoperability, we will be able to do multi-transactions in one single transaction for the user. So with the click of the button, I can send Lionel one entire ETH and have it work everything under the hood to facilitate that transaction. Does that make sense? So just going back a bit, so that means that if we've got four, let's say got four wallets and you've got four lots of ETH in four different wallets, you have to still go into your wallet, record where they are and then bring them into that space and then send them? Nope. You say it's automatic. It's automatic, yep. You'll be able to choose where you want to pull that from. So, so if you had, are you it, using Chrome? Uh, yes, that'll be part of Chrome. Okay. Next, next one, wallet fees. Kevin did an awesome job of talking about. Question, yeah. Oh, question. Yeah. So what you're saying about? I'm sorry, you got to hold questions to the end. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go for it. Do you want the mic? So what we were just saying before, like if you got four different wallets, and say if you didn't stipulate what wallet you want to have pulled from, or do you have to, or will it pull, you know, as 25% off each actual wallet to send one? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, I'll drop some alpha for you. We have smart contracts, why not have smart wallets, right? Why not have it calculate the cheapest route for you to go? Uh, okay. Oh, by default, mm, seems pretty nice, right? 
<laughs> Same thing with buying. How many of you have bought Ethereum or ETH on BNB by mistake? <laughs> or some other chain and you're like, ah, oh, crap, now i got to try to go undo it. So you spend 100 bucks to get ETH and then you turn around and undo it. And by the time you get it to where it needs to be, you're at, what, 40 bucks? <laughs> what a pain. And the deal you were chasing is gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What if it was intelligent enough to know which asset you're buying for what chain? Or even better, why not just keep it all on L1X? Because when you keep it on L1X, with the liquidity on L1X, it's only one cent transaction fee. When you say Chrome, you mean like, like as in using the Google Chrome? Chrome extension. Just well, like a MetaMask. Why would you do that? Right? Okay. Why would you do that? I mean, I, I, logically, it just doesn't make that doesn't make sense to me. Everything else is brilliant, but I just yeah, kind of got a pet hate against Google. Well, I want to give Chrome. Chrome is only the first step in the evolution. Yeah. Okay. Hang tight, my friend. Okay. I'll get you. Okay. He will. Okay. So the other thing that we're doing is uh, obviously with fees, right? Being able to toggle and as you're importing your wallets, you could move those assets and liquidity, TBL, from those chains to L1X. Why? Because then you don't have to pay the Ethereum gas fees. You can literally trade Ethereum when it's on L1X for one cent. One cent. You heard it from him. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Is it one cent a day and it goes up every day by double? No. Oh, that would uh, be nice. It's not Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the Chrome extension, okay, we are calling the Light Wallet Experience. Okay? I, uh, as we start kind of walking through this, you're going to see some changes happening here. Okay? So, the Chrome extension wallet will be available in August of 2023. Okay, there are three core features, the three we just went over. If you have questions about it, come talk to me afterwards. Okay? So. Did you, did you cover the gas fee? Like, as in, oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Going back to this, too. Um, with Layer 1X token, you will basically be able to use that as a gas fee regardless of the chain. If our, if our government would just change taxes to gas fees, we'd be far better on that. <laughs> Sweet. I like that. Absolutely. <laughs> we do $17 trillion a day in turnover in just Australia alone. Jeez. That's awesome. So, so no, if we've got a gas fee of 0 0.006, we're actually making something like about $5 trillion a week. Pocket change, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's the light wallet experience. Here's the alpha. It's time for us to embrace the boundaries, right? I am a big believer that as we are programmed, like you mentioned earlier, right? We are programmed. We love our boxes. Regardless of what we think we know, we love our boxes. We live in the house. We like sticking into boxes. Why? Because we are more creative. We are more productive. Because we know the boundaries of the box and we push to the corners as much as possible. Okay? And we look for solutions rather than trying just to ignore the problem and try to find a quick solution. Right? So, L1X plans to think inside the box when it comes to the wallet. Keep that in mind. How are we going to do that? We are creating what's known as the Wallet Operating System, which is a new standard. It's an engineering layer the, that developers will be able to come and build on, and like you mentioned, have the wallet automatically built in. Okay. The other thing we're doing is we're introducing X apps. It's not a DAP. Okay, what's a DAP? Basically a link and a browser to a third-party website protocol, right? How many of you guys have smartphones? Everybody's raising their hands, right? With this 
with this uh, wallet operating system. We are making it literally easy enough for uh, developers to come in and develop apps on top of that protocol. So now the users will never have to leave the wallet experience. Why are we doing this? Because you talked about phishing, right? Security, fraud, all that kind of stuff, right? That's why we're doing it. Because now that they're in the wallet, there is no worry of having to connect to the wrong URL, right? Now developers are able to not only create a different type of experience, but because of the ecosystem we're creating, they are able to expand upon a lot of different things, right? And so what we're doing is, is we're basically using the tech stack of L1X to build out this experience. So you've got identity. We didn't talk about identity, right? We touched upon it a little bit with like healthcare and things like that. But imagine taking your game, taking your health, taking your investment, taking your whatever, all of that data follows you wherever you go and you're in control of it. How many of you would like to sell your data and monetize your data instead of having Facebook, Twitter, and all of these big platforms mining your data and then making the money and you getting zero? And it's to yourself. Okay. By us doing this, it allows us to sell your data with your permission. You control what you want to sell to developers that are developing on the uh, OX system, right? Now you get paid every time you see an ad. How crazy is that? Gives you an incentive to be inside the wallet, right? So, again, because we are re-engineering what the wallet experience is, I hate using the term wallet. To me, it is an experience, right? No matter if it's a Chrome experience or if it's something else, which I'm going to go over here in just a minute. But we're giving developers an, an opportunity to create one app that goes across many different verticals. Okay? Go. There's some alpha for you. Coming in fall of this year, we're going to be releasing the browser wallet. It's the first iteration of what we are re-envisioning re as the next generation wallet, okay? There's a reason why we're starting out with the Chrome extension wallet and moving to the browser wallet before we get to the final wallet, okay? Has anybody heard of Shellshock, right? Yeah, you can't change things up too fast, too quick, or else you won't see adoption. You'll lose people. Right? So you've got to slowly take them through a journey, and this is how we're doing it. Right? So this isn't a dashboard view. I've got to make that clear. Like, how many of you guys have used MetaMask's portfolio view? Is it, do you even know MetaMask? You're shaking your head. <laughs> hey, they did a great job of letting everybody know there's one, right? Um, this is not that. This is, will be a full-fledged uh, wallet that you will be able to interact with the X apps and you will basically be able to complete your transactions all with one. Okay? What if I told you there was a thing called a single sign-on? Has anybody heard of single sign-on? Yes? What does that allow you to do? Single sign-on? Just log in once. Log in once. You have access to everything. The problem with MetaMask at the moment is the, that, little, that little fox that moves its head has the same algorithm. So if when we were trying to amalgamate our blockchain to it, it wouldn't bite. And we had to rewrite and then redo it and stop that bloody thing from moving so that you get it to, to cross over. Yeah. So what if you could just log in once and have access to all your apps? We've well, got the end of the night before you go home. <laughs> <laughs> 300 wallets you can have. Sweet. So in the fall, we are coming out with Wallet management, smart transaction, L1X gas fees, X app, single sign-on. And here's the real kicker, and this is what I'm really excited about. 
How many of you would like to change the skin on your MetaMask wallet and kind of personalize it, right? That's Can I ask a question? Sorry. Again, you got to wait till the end. <laughs> when you're talking about fall, are you talking about Australian fall? Because we're in the winter now. So Since we're having a drinking game, you got to take like five drinks before I'll answer your question. I'm just kidding. I'm encouraging. No, are you talking about like in our autumn? Oh, geez, yes. I am so sorry. So that would be October ish. October ish, I think, is like your spring. Hot and cold. That's all we have. Yeah. So it'll be in October, October, November ish, kind of right around there. Which is our spring. <laughs> nope, nope, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you for calling out, me out on that one. So, there's no season. Well, see, in Utah, we have like three months of summer and the rest is just winter. We just have hot and cold. Yeah, that's how we are. Yeah. So, the main thing is, is we want you to be able to customize your experience, right? So even within the wallet, if you want to rearrange a few things, that's okay, you can. Okay, we want you to feel comfortable with it. We want you to prioritize things the way you want it, right? Um, so that's where the basic user customization will be coming in. In that space, does that mean that we can put things like our driver's licenses securely hidden into that? Or? Eventually, yeah. Just remember. We're taking baby steps here, right? Okay. We've got to bring people over. My main step. goal is, is I want my 80-year-old dad, who doesn't even know how to turn on a computer, oh, to be able to use it. Yes. Yep. Yep. If I can do that, my job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? My grandma. Okay. <laughs> so, the next-gen wallet. Your dad's already here. The next gen wallet, okay? Uh, if you notice here, this is a, a browser wallet, any browser, that's our goal, right? Safari, Chrome, I know you hate Chrome. Um, Firefox, you, Brave, yes, Brave, definitely. Right, we want to be able to access it through anything, right? So now, when you look at the next gen, we're gonna take it even a step further, right? Web app, native apps, and they're all kind of that customized experience, right? It's not going to look like the browser wallet. It's going to be the next evolution. So I kind of left this blank because I can only give you so much alpha, okay? But the biggest thing is, is like there's going to be advanced user customization experiences and more coming, okay? So who's excited to try the app? Yes. Yeah. So, oh, thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yep. I just want to say um, a huge thank you to uh, all our speakers tonight. Um, thank you for coming up and speaking to everybody, and and also thank you to our sponsors for tonight as well, uh, and uh, thank you to to the LNX team and everybody that helped uh, organise um, this event. Uh, and look, we, we still have some drinks there, we still have some food. If you have any questions, please stick around and, um, and talk to us. Um, but yeah, thank you for attending and um, have a good evening. Thank you. You going back tonight? To Bunbury? You going back to Collie or? No, no, I'm, I haven't lived in Collie for oh, I can't